Sewing with Amy. In the last video, I showed you how I thread the machine and um, how I get all my tools and such set up. In this video, we're just going to get straight to the project where I will be uh, sewing, cutting, pinning, and ironing. I have a lot of work to do, so let's just get started. For this purse, you will need three squares of fabric, all the same size, whatever size that you like. However, I cut my fabric wrong already. Measure once, cut twice. That's how it goes, right? So mine are a little more rectangle than square, but they are even, so it will work just fine. You will need interfacing on the back of one, which will be the outside of your purse, and then some interfacing on half of another, which will be the pocket. Now you can use whatever fabric you want. They can be all the same, three different fab fabrics, or just two. Most people choose two. One for the outside and pocket, and one for the inside. I'm a little weird though, and I love color, so I chose three different fabrics. Um, my mom always tells people that when I was young, if I had 24 crayons in my box, there were 24 colors in my p picture because I used them all. I've just shown you the fabric for the outside of the purse with the interfacing already ironed on and also the fabric for the pocket of the purse with the um, interfacing not yet ironed. But before we get to that, let's get to the inside lining fabric and uh, let's cut it to size. Once I get it unfolded and laying nice and flat on the cutting board, um, I'm just going to take the fabric that we already have cut for the outside of the purse and lay it in the bottom left hand corner and then I'm just going to take my Omni Grid um, ruler and lay it across so that it'll give me a nice sturdy edge to draw my line and, and draw out the edge of the fabric. After I've marked my lines with the blue fabric pencil, I can then go in with my rotary fabric cutter and um, just cut out the right and top side. Normally a rotary cutter with a bigger blade would be better here, but um, I find that it's harder for me to hold the bigger handle in my mouth, so I tend to stick with the smaller blade. They're not quite as sharp as a bigger blade, but it still gets the job done. I just have to kind of go through it a, a couple of times. Now that our last piece of fabric is cut, we can go ahead and iron it. Ironing the fusible interfacing is a little bit different. First, make sure that the bumpy side of the interfacing is against the inside of the fabric you are adhering it to. Then take a piece of scrap fabric and place it on top. This will ensure that the interfacing doesn't shift under the iron. Instead of sliding the iron around on the fabric, let it sit for a few seconds to heat and bind the interfacing. Do this until the whole surface has been covered. Now 
now let's lay out the pieces and put them together, starting with the outside fabric. First, laying that face down and then taking your inside lining fabric and laying it face up on top. I then take the inside pocket, fold it in half, and I lay it on the bottom half of the lining fabric with the folded side facing upward. Now, grabbing hold of the outside and inside fabric at the top, fold it down over the pocket, stopping wherever you feel you want the purse lid to end. I did this so I could measure and decide where I want the magnetic snaps to be placed. So I'm using my Omni grid to find the middle of the lid and then marking with my fabric pencil up about an inch or so from the edge. And then sliding the lid up a little bit, I try and mark where the other half of the snap would go on the pocket. Before attaching the snap, I want to reinforce the stability of the inner lining. We don't want all of that tugging on the snap to rip through the fabric later. So I'm just taking a small piece of scrap fabric and attaching it with some stitch witchery on the inside lining right over top of where the snap is going to go. I gotta tell you, I'm kind of proud of myself for being able to accomplish this next step. I watched YouTube videos on how to properly install these magnetic snaps and they made it look so easy by just shoving the prongs right through the fabric. But let me tell you, I don't know what kind of superhuman strength these people had, but I was in no way able to puncture the fabric with the very dull prongs. And neither could my mom. Scissors were not an option for me, so it was back to brainstorming. And then it hit me. So I took the washer off of the prongs and used the holes to mark on the fabric exactly where I needed to make the cut. And then putting down a cutting mat under the fabric, I used the rotary cutter to cut directly on those marks by just pressing down firmly until it cut through. That way the cuts were just large enough for the prongs to fit through. Making sure to grab the male end of the snap, I push it through from the front of the fabric to the back and then slide on the washer. This next part proved to be a bit challenging as well. Other YouTube videos showed to spread the prongs apart until they're flat with the fabric. I tried, but I wasn't strong enough. I squeezed them together a little bit with my teeth and I realized that it was much easier, so I figured that that did the job just as well as the other way. After putting the pieces together again, I just repeated the process putting the female end on the pocket. If you remember on the sample purse I showed you in the last video, it had a little wristlet strap, but for me, I'm going to make it more of a crossbody strap. I cut my strip about 3 inches wide, and I wanted it to be about 18 inches long, but my fabric was not long enough, so you'll notice that I already extended the length with another piece of fabric and sewed it on the diagonal. This will make the seam less noticeable once the strap is finished. Now this next part isn't necessarily hard, but multiple fingers are needed so it makes the process time consuming. Basically you're going to be folding the fabric in half and ironing, but multiple times to get a finished edge. 
I'm going to do this in small sections and use lots of pins to hold the fabric in place while I iron. And here I'm just going to cut off some extra length. Finally, we get to do some sewing. The machine is already threaded. We did that in the last video. Now I'm using the grippy chopstick, if you will, to set my settings so that it automatically backstitches at the beginning. The grippy chopstick also helps me to feed the fabric through and keep it straight. Remember the knee lift I mentioned in the last video? It's that metal rod sticking up in the air with a white thing on top. Technically, this should be facing downward and you would use your knee to push outward against it. What this does is lifts the presser foot so you don't have to reach to the back and lift it. Then your hands are always free to manipulate the fabric. This is kind of the perfect concept for me since I have a hard time reaching it. Except it's not so perfect when you don't have knees. We flipped it upside down and thankfully it works by pulling inward since it is now backwards. So with my right arm I pull inward, my left arm holds the fabric, and the grippy chopstick in my mouth reaches closer to the presser foot. It takes some coordination. First I sew down the length of the open end of the strap.
once at the bottom at the push of a button it again back stitches and cuts the thread and then turn the strap around and sew the length of the other side Here I've pinned each end of the strap to the outside fabric, being sure to place it towards the top of where the pocket will sit, and make sure the strap edges are lined up with the edge of the fabric. I basically sewed over this back and forth a few times to make sure it's secure, since there will be a lot of tugging during use. If you're interested in making one of your own and would like obvious better directions than my own, I'll post the link to the tutorial that I used in the description box. outside fabric and the pocket, place them right sides together with the open edge of the pocket lined up with the bottom edge of the outside fabric, and sew only along the bottom edge. Once you've done that, take the inner lining and lay it face down on the right side of the outer fabric with the snap towards the top and the pocket at the bottom. Pin around the outer edge and sew all the way around the perimeter, leaving about 4 inches of an opening at the bottom so you can turn it inside out. Also make sure that the strap is tucked in between all of the fabric and also make sure not to sew the strap um, in any way. Now we can take the pins out and turn the purse right side out. And here's where I'm realizing that I probably should have left more than 4 inches open as it's proving pretty difficult for me to do. You'll notice that it still looks a little funny, that's because the pocket still needs to be turned right side out. But before that, here's where you'd hand stitch that 4 inch opening closed. Since it's on the inside, I just sewed it on the sewing machine off camera. Also check out that split down the side, that wasn't supposed to happen guys. Obviously I didn't make sure the edge of the pocket was tucked in there perfectly, so that will have to be fixed later. Another thing to notice is those rounded uneven corners. Had I trimmed the corners just outside of the seams just before turning, they would have been a little cleaner. As you can tell, this purse was not a complete success from the start, but I am happy with it. Thanks again for joining me. For these last two episodes, I did the project, the filming, and the editing all on my own. So hopefully I got some good camera angles in there for you so that you could see everything perfectly. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. 
follow me on Facebook, and check out my website. Links in the description box below. And as always, I love getting your feedback. Until next time, bye guys!